Hey guys, Stealth here. We're going to have a look at my South Korean deck. Now, I'm, as I'm recording this video, I'm also going to be revising it slightly. Um, I want to use this deck mainly on 10v10 maps. So those are usually large open maps. And I want to be able to ass uh, assault a position through the flanks. So I'm not going down the middle where usually a lot of towns are. I'm going to the open sides. So i got to keep that in mind. Uh, those are going to be the units I want to bring. Now the logistics is nothing special. I'm using 8 command jeeps to make sure I can capture zones and support my allies. I have 5 supply choppers. I have 1 FOB and I have some cargo trucks. Um, actually now that I'm thinking about it I'm going to swap these out and I'm going to get some more command or some more, some more logistics choppers in here. Because on an open map you want something that goes fast and Chinooks definitely move fast. Now, like I said, not a lot of infantry in this deck because it doesn't suit my needs. Um, I've really thought about these guys and I came up with a couple of Mistrals in helicopters because very mobile. And they have good AA. I can hide these in forests, I can put them on mountain tops, I can hide them in towns if I need to help someone out there. Um, the same goes for the seals, which are also coming in helicopters. Now they're coming in the Black Hawk, or at least the um, South Korean variant of it. Very good um, commandos, and so far I haven't used them yet, because I haven't felt the need to use them. Finally, I got Sochung Su 85s, and I have decided to bring these guys in a KAFV 25, because they come with excellent autocannons. Now, if you've been watching my uh, second Korean War campaign, you can see just uh, how effective these things can be. And I get these things more for the vehicle than for the infantry. Because there's really not a lot to do for the infantry. A lot of fighting is going to be done on open ground. And that's where infantry doesn't exactly excel. So that's why I have my KAV-25s in this deck. I was considering getting the KAV-40-50. But these things come only with a grenade launcher, which is nice, but that's mostly an anti-infantry weapon. These things come with an auto cannon, which has some AP power, and that's what I want to have, because these things can then take out a tank on very, very short range, take out um, IFVs on medium range, and take out APCs and unarmored vehicles at their maximum range. So that's something I had to keep in mind, and that's why I wanted to bring these KAV-25s. One thing to note though is that on 10v10 maps which are normally very very big these things might be the first to go out of fuel because they have seven, sorry, 480 uh, kilometer range. So you might need to refuel these things at some point. And again that's what we have the Chinooks for. Now up to the support section. I have a couple of these K9 Thunders. I have never actually used them because I don't play the blue dragons that much. So that doesn't mean, that means I don't play Korea, South Korea, Japan or a combination of them. Um, so if you have any feedback on how this unit performs let me know. Next I have the K30B Ho. This is a well you could say the Eastern or the South Korean version of the Jeopard. I think that's the thing it closely resembles especially by, or at least by the looks of it. It's a very good anti-air gun for 55 points. Keep in mind, radar guided, so turn it off when those seat planes start showing up. I only have five of these things, because these things will be the mainstay of my AA, and I want them to be very accurate. Now with 55% accuracy while standing still is already very good. Hardened veterancy will add a little bit to that. Next up is my long-range uh, airplane defense in the form of M727 PIP 2s. Uh, Unfortunately they cannot get the PIP 3 so this is the best I have. I don't really like these things. Um, I prefer to have a little bit more missiles on my AA. But this is the only long-range AA you get when you're playing South Korea. So then I am um, forced to take either these or the Pip Hawk standard, so the iHawk. Um, the difference is just a little bit of range against helicopters and about 5% accuracy. So you could go with these things if you wanted to. I have four of these at hardened to further improve their accuracy. 
And since they only carry three missiles each, I really do want some of these things to hit. Finally, in my support section, I have the KM-163. Now, these things are very good AA guns. You'll probably recognize them from the American deck, and you'd be right, because this is just the South Korean version of it. Otherwise, it's pretty much exactly the same platform. The one difference is that this thing um, does not have a radar. You can get that if you want to. You can get this one. But it's a little bit more expensive. Um, it's a bit more accurate, but I do like these things because I don't have to babysit them. I don't have to turn their radars on and off depending on whether they're seed in the area. One thing I don't like about them though is their autonomy of 300. You will need to refuel these things. They will run out of fuel on big maps because if you're going from south to north, as I've just uh, seen in my replay, that's about 250 to 300 kilometers depending on the route you take. And that's when these things will run out of fuel. So keep a Chinook handy to get them refueled. Next up, moving to the tank section. And this is really where the deck has its punching power, because this is what I use on the assaults. These things have good autonomy, and right here we're looking at the K1. I have nine of these at Hardened. I would like to have seven or five at Veteran, because I'm never going to need 18 of these tanks. But these tanks are pretty much um, the South Korean equivalent of the standard M1 Abrams. Um, although it has been improved on several fronts, such as the frontal armor, 17, that's very good. Decent rate of fire, decent stabilizer, very good accuracy with standing still. AP power should have been a little bit higher for my taste, but okay, it'll do. If I am coming up against heavier vehicles, I will use the K1A1, and I will try to use these in combination. These go after standard vehicles and medium tanks, and these go after everything else, basically. Everything that's, say, upwards of 120 points. Because the K1A1 has 22 AP power, 1 point more frontal armor, a little bit more accuracy, and unfortunately you can only get 4 of these at trained or 3 at hardened. I went with four because I want a little bit more firepower in the field, a little bit more numbers than veterancy. And with the amount of firepower these things have, they will get their hardened veterancy pretty quickly by themselves. They are a prototype unit, so unfortunately I only have one card. I would have liked to have I would like to have had more of these, but unfortunately this is what you get. Now the autonomy of these things is pretty good, 500, so you don't need to worry about them as much. Same for the standard K1. And as a sort of a filler tank, because I had some room in my deck, I decided to use the M48A5. 460 kilometer autonomy. And I keep highlighting this area because it's important on such a big map. You do not want to be babysitting your units. You don't want to babysit them and have to carry a fuel tanker after them. And this thing will make sure that you don't have to do it as much. The higher the autonomy, the less babysitting. So that's why I'm constantly looking at this section. Now about the M48, um, it's a pattern, what can I say? It doesn't have very good stats on anything. But for 45 points you get a 16 AP power gun, which is even better than the gun that is carried by the K1 actually. Which only has a 15, power, a 15 AP power gun. The accuracy is a bit less, um, they carry the same amount of shells. Stabilizer is not available on the M45, uh, M48A5, so do not fire these things on the move if you can help it. Sorry, you cannot fire these things on the move, so don't even try. If these things are on attack move, that's when they work best. So alternate the M48A5 using attack moves, using uh, move fast, and that way they should take out their targets and keep moving fast through a map. Next up, Recon, again, focused on high mobility. And for that I first have a helicopter. This is a scout helicopter, the OH-6, unarmed, very fast, very small. That means that it is pretty survivable. Um, it's not as easy to lock onto by both SPOGs and AA missiles, so it should be safe so long as you keep it moving. Don't keep it in one spot because you're going to get predictable there. Next up, KAFV-90. 
This is a very, very good recon, and I have used it exceptionally well in both the campaign and the replay I've just uploaded. This KAV-90 has the Cockerill Mark 8, which is a 13 AP power gun on a scout. Now, that is some of the best scouting I have seen. Unfortunately, it is a prototype, so if you were running a general NATO deck, you couldn't get this thing. But if you're running a Blue Dragons deck, so if you're combined with Japan or just a pure South Korean deck, this thing is a no-brainer. You want this thing in your deck. It is that good. It has some armor on most sides, except for the top. Um, try to keep it out of range from helicopters and planes. Try to get side shots on tanks. And if you can do that, combining it with his medium stealth will definitely get you some kills. And keep in mind that you only need one kill to get these points back. It's only 35 points. I'm bringing 10 of these at hardened. Um, if you want more, you can get 16 at trained, but... I don't see how you could ever use 16 of these KAVs. You don't really need that much recon. Next up in the high mobility section is the Fiat 6616. Um, mostly an anti-infantry scout vehicle. I have five of these, which makes them pretty rare. Um, but they do make up for it in every other sector. Because they have very good speed. Very good road speed, of course. It's a wheeled vehicle. Grenade launcher and an autocannon. So you can use them against helicopters. You can use them to kill any infantry that's out in the open. And they're even amphibious, so you can use them to float across rivers. That makes them very, very versatile scouts. Much more so than the KAV-90, which is more of an assault scout. So this is why I use these things to scout uh, sidelines, to scout flanks. Uh, and I use them in combination with tanks if I'm going to expect infantry. Because a grenade launcher is of course the ideal weapon to go after infantry. Now finally I have these uh, Tukjon Sa. And these are my recon uh, infantry. Elite troopers. And I would like to use these guys in combination with my seals from the infantry section. To go after behind the lines operations. But it doesn't really happen that often when you're playing a 10v10. Often the map will change so quickly that something behind the lines just doesn't really occur very often. Switching to the vehicle tab, I have the M18. This is the Hellcat. Um, for 10 points you get a 6 AP power gun on a platform that goes 100 kph. So that is a very very nice platform for such a mobile, or for such a decent gun. It's only 10 points. Um, it will die to any kind of fire, especially IFVs are th threatening. Stuff with autocannons will kill these things in one or two shots. So don't expect any miracles from them. Um, but they have to kill one IFV and you've regained their value. Now if you compare, for example, this AP power to uh, the frontal armor of a Patton, they can even go through that. If you were to kill one pattern using one or even two of these M18s, you'd have their value back. So that's how quickly these guys can earn their worth. I also have the different brother. This is the M36. I'm going to compare these guys for good measure. The M36 is a lot less mobile, uh, but it has a better gun. 8 AP power versus 6. It lacks the Browning machine gun, so don't use it against infantry, but use it against IFVs, um, tank destroyers, or ATGM carriers if you can get that close. Or just use them as a throwaway gun and use them to soak up ATGMs if you really have to. One thing to note about both the M18 and the 36 is that they have very, very low autonomy. 250 and 200. You will have to carry a fuel can around to get these guys to the front line. Or, you have to call them in very, very close to the front line. Next up in the vehicle tab is the KM-132. Not much special about this vehicle. It's just a napalm carrier and it's the only one that the South Koreans get. I always like to have one of these things in my deck because having napalm just makes it so much, more, or so much easier to go after infantry. And keep in mind that these things are amphibious. So you can sneak up on a town from the side where they might not expect you. Finally, I have uh, some ITO launchers, 
just some standard HGM carriers. I decided uh, not to go with the TOW 2 launcher, even though these things are um, coming with a better HGM. The ITO has a little worse um, accuracy and a little worse AP power, but I found that 25 AP power is mostly overkill, because you'll very rarely come up against super heavies or stuff that needs 20 AP power. Even my tanks don't get to 20 AP power. So you use this to go through the front of, I'd say, an Abrams M1A2, maybe a, um, a K1A1, a T80U, something like that, something which has a lot of armor. But in most cases, this thing will perfectly do its job. It has some armor which is better than the TO2. It carries twice the amount of missiles. Um, and 20 AP power is just generally enough. And I have 10 of these in my deck. You can get 16 at trained if you want more, but that will go at the cost of some more accuracy, so be careful with that. Moving to the helicopter section. Um, I intentionally don't use the MD500s. Because these things, um, although they come with a very good ATGM, are constantly going to be flying forth between the FOB and the target. Which means that they will constantly be going back and forth, and I don't want that micromanagement to clog my brain and to clog my gameplay. So instead I went with assault helicopters, gunships, because these also carry a Vulcan cannon and hydras, which means they're a bit more versatile. I have one of these AH-1Ts with the TOW 2s. This is when you come up against heavier tanks. If you come up against lighter tanks or lighter vehicles, you just want to support your infantry against other infantry or vehicles, use the AH-1S. Still comes with eight ITO missiles, which is usually enough to take down a couple tanks. Hydra rocket pods and the Vulcan. So this is an all-round solution to most problems you're going to encounter on the front line. Now finally is the air section, and this is where I'm going to make some adjustments, because find, uh, having two of these KF-16Cs is a bit much. I found that one is enough. The reason I went with two is that because they are very, very good air superiority fighters, which also have their own seed missile. And that is why I wanted to have two. Now before, a couple of patches ago, you'd automatically get two if you get one card of these in. But now you don't get that many units anymore, so you get one unit per card at the hardened veterancy. And one unit is enough, because you use it mostly as a seed plane, and use, for example, a KF-16C as your dedicated AA fighter. Let's see, I could use this one, or the Peace Bridge. Yeah, definitely this one for better range than the MRAMs. So, get three of those trains in. Next up, I got the Peace Pheasant. This thing is my tank sniper. If I have a heavy tank, uh, and that by heavy tank I mean a super heavy, which is threatening my lines, I will use one of these to take it out. They are um, 90 points, which means they can hurt if they if you lose them, so try not to. And something to keep in mind is that the accuracy on these missiles is not that good. Their ECM also isn't that good. Um, so you got to be a bit careful with these things. Try to keep them away from AA, because they'll generally not survive that. Next up is another Peace Pheasant. This is the Peace Pheasant 1, and this is the Peace Pheasant 2. The difference between these is their loadout. This one also has less ECM, 10%, and it comes with a cluster, or sorry, a um, carpet bombing run. And by that I mean that with this thing I can go after infantry if there's a lot out in the open or if I want to just suppress a town. 18 227 kilogram bombs will quickly panic infantry or destroy them if they're in the open. And you can even use it to go after some lighter vehicles. Using them against tanks is not recommended because they just cannot do anything against those. Um, these things do not have a uh, anti-air gun sorry, or an, an autocannon, like the Pheasant 2 does. So these are just, um, yeah, I like to call them freight trucks, and because the only thing is deliver freight in the sense of bombs. That's the only thing they do. Finally, in this deck, I have the F-5A, and this is my napalm bomber. 
Um, I use these in case of a heavy town defense and because napalm will panic or destroy the infantry, my infantry then will have a much easier time pushing into that town. You can also use it to block off roads or cause units such as tanks to panic, making them a lot easier target. I have four of these um, and again they're just freight trucks. They're here to deliver napalm bombs and not to do anything else. So I'm not even going to look at the twin Pontiac gun which it has. Although if you were really desperate, you could even use this thing um, as an anti-helicopter unit because 30% is not that bad with a 1575 meter range. Uh, you could use it to strafe ground targets and you could use it to go after airplanes if you're really, really desperate, but I would recommend it against it. So that's the deck. I hope you like it. If you do and if you want to use it, the deck import code is below in the description. If you want to see how this, this deck performs in an actual battle, be sure to watch my 10v10 gameplay. I have a link to that video in the description below as well. If you like the video, please hit like. It really helps me out and it lets me know that I'm doing a good job because I want your feedback. And if you have any feedback you want to put down in text, please leave me a comment below. I always look forward to hearing from you guys, so leave me a comment, please. If you want to see more Wargame, if you're addicted like me to it, just join my channel, subscribe to it, and I will try to get you a video every day. Thanks for watching, and see you in another video.